Pat here from Dead Things. Told you I was going to continue to use that. So now we talk about air cylinders. And there are uh, some main considerations that you need to, to think about with air cylinders. Um, one being stroke, which is the length of the cylinder, how far it's going to travel. And with certain um, mechanisms, which is basically what you use this all with, you can get a lot of travel out of a, a small, um, a small throw of a cylinder or a small extension of a cylinder. Case in point is Widowmaker's uh, scissor prop. He's using a, a cylinder that looks like, and I, I could be wrong, Greg, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's uh, um, probably a 10 or 12-inch stroke cylinder, and he's getting easily six, eight feet worth of travel out of that. So that's one of the things about this, right? It's all in your, your mechanism that you're using it in. So stroke is being the length of the cylinder, the other thing is the bore, which is the girth of the cylinder. And the larger the bore, the less air pressure required, PSI, pounds per square inch, less air pressure required to move a weight. So, first off, that guy, which is a... Um, three quarter inch bore, two inch stroke. All this stuff is in uh, metric up here, so it's actually millimeters. It's 20 millimeter bore, and uh, I believe this is 50 millimeter stroke. So that's the thing. This one here is 20 millimeter bore, and I believe that's a 75 millimeter stroke. So about uh, three inches, maybe a little better. <clears throat> that one there is a 25 millimeter bore, so one inch bore, and it is a 200 millimeter stroke, so that's about 10 inch stroke. And what stroke is, is it's the extended range, this here. And it's not this whole point here, it's this part here. Because you can put, you have to put an attachment of some sort on it. This end usually is threaded, okay? So, there's that. Then, oh yeah, daddy. That is a 40 millimeter bore uh, 300 millimeter stroke. So that is one and a half inch bore and a one foot stroke on that. And that's what I'm going to be using on my, uh, the four bar part of my witch prop. I want to make sure I have more than enough there to lift that mechanism. So now we get into something called single acting or double acting. All of mine are double acting and by double acting there is a port here and a port here. Okay so air comes in here it forces that open. Air comes in here it forces it closed. So you see that with this, the way this is set up, this air, this chamber would have air in it. So that air has to exhaust in order for it to extend. Hence the need for an exhaust on your solenoid or a way to exhaust on your solenoid. Now if this was a single acting cylinder, it would have a spring typically in here, but it can be on the uh, the extended side, but typically it's on the retracted side. And so air comes in here, extends the ram, and then when the air exhausts out of there, the spring is what pushes it, the ram back in. 
This is what I use in my uh, pneumatic groundbreaker, one on each arm. Okay, and these are the those uh, those same uh, um, fittings that that quarter inch green hose goes into. Uh, and I use these elbow ones so that I can snake the uh, the cords down, the uh, hose down. If it comes out straight like this, that stuff's pretty stiff, so it's actually going to probably curve like about that before it uh, before it um, I can get it to to travel downward. This way, I just so if if you if you're concerned about that, always go for these. They're a little bit more expensive, but well worth it. So then, how do you? what does one attach these to a prop right well it's with clevises so this is a clevis up here this just screws on to this end as I said these ends are threaded just screws on this particular one if I pop this okay that removes so then I can put something like, say, um, say that, right? Right in there. This goes in like this. That in. Oh, I'm gonna focus in. But basically, you get the idea, right? That goes in like that. Right, through there. Right, but in between there. For this end, this had this one I actually had to purchase a separate piece because this was a block end. So I had to purchase this piece to bolt into there. <laughs> basically something like that and that end goes in like this and then you just run a bolt through there I am lucky in that I do have access to a welder so I make my own clevis mounts um, where at all possible um, this one I bought just because it was five bucks to buy the thing uh, I'm having a hard time finding clevis mounts this size where I get my pneumatics so it's just it's just easier for me to uh, to build them you know funner too you know I like doing that type of stuff so um, so that is the basics of pneumatics uh, you have your air compressor which delivers your power you have your solenoid which controls the power you have flow controls to control how much power is being um, utilized and then you have the air cylinder which actually manifests the power um, pneumatics in themselves are pretty simple it's it's a lot like it's a lot like electronics or or, or electrical not electronics it's a lot like electrical, um, a lot like plumbing, you know, air comes in, water comes in, water needs a way to go out, and it's the same with this. Air comes in, air needs a way to go out. You need a way to shut the air, turn the air on and off, and you need a way for the air to get out of that, that system, right? So it's, it's very similar to that. The trick in all this is in the mechanisms that you use, the four bar, the scissor lift, the lifter props all those types of things that's really where where the key to this whole thing lies in how you uh, how you utilize that and that is what I found to be actually probably the most uh, challenging and rewarding aspect of uh, of pneumatics when you finally get that prop to move so it doesn't bind <laughs> you know and uh, and the thing about it is you can have things that that turn in a circle um, you know some of my grave grabbers and that type of thing the witch turning head you know the the 
the uh, the ghosts, the axe words, the ghosts, all those types of things, circular movements, right? Um, but when you have something coming at you really quickly, um, that makes people jump and scream, which is why we do this thing, kids. So, anyways, I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, by all means, put them in the uh, the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, so. Take care.